Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here. The T's Official Study Guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today will be the continuation of what we did yesterday and day before yesterday which is to solve some simple linear equation, equations containing one variables. We did some problems yesterday on page number on page number 150 and today I will continue with that topic except on page 150 there are five you will see you will, you will find five practice problems on page 150. We did all of them yesterday. Today what we're gonna do is three problems which are not in the book. They are as I have labeled here bonus problems. These three problems that we're going to do are, are straight out of this old edition, the T's 5, which came out in 2012. And I know it's some years ago, but I, as I explained to you the first day in this day number one in the series, that math is math. Math does not go out of fashion. So if you want to get some extra practice, you can go on my channel and look for a series of video. Just just go to YouTube and just type in. Fold this type in my name, Keshwani, otherwise there are many, many people doing the same exact thing that I'm doing, obviously. Just type in Keshwani, T is 5, day 1. And that's where the series starts. There you will find 80 videos if you want to practice some, if you want to get some more practice. And you will find a solution to all the problems that, that I just showed you in 2012 edition. And today we're going to do three problems out of this book here, straight out of this book. Let's take a look at them. Number one says, so what I want you to do is, as soon as I put the, what I want you to do is, as soon as I put the problem on the blackboard, I want you to pause the video and do it yourself. Do it yourself and then once you have done it, resume the video and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. You will you'll find that you will get more out of it that way. Number one. Example number one, it says, 2 times 3x minus 1 is equal to 4x minus 14. I'll give you a couple of seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Alright, let's take a look at it, shall we? Let's take a look at it. 2 times 3x is 6x and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 and we get 4x minus 14. Now our job is to bring all the all the unknown quantities to this side, in other words bring the 4x to this side and bring all the known quantities to that side. So let's add 2 to both sides so that we can get rid of this 2 from this side, negative 2 and a positive 2, negative 2, negative 2 and a positive 2, they will kill each other. And let's bring, let's subtract 4x from both sides. This is positive 4x, let's subtract 4x from both sides. So we have a positive 4x and negative 4x, we can get rid of that. And here we end up with 6x minus 4x will equal 2x. And on this side we have a negative 14 and a positive 2. Negative 14 and a positive 2 would be negative 12. And now divide both sides by 2 to get rid of this 2 here. And as soon as we do that, it bothers me now because the equal sign is way up in the sky. It should be brought down. This equal sign should line up with, with the fraction sign here. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. 2 is going to go away. And x equals negative 12 over 2, which is negative 6. So we are claiming that x is equal to negative 6. Oh, by the way, before I forget it, if you want to do more of these problems, problems involving one variable equations you will also find on my on my you will also find on my on my channel the series of video labeled simply as basic math just type in Kishwani and then basic math day 14 and you will find some problems there very similar to what we're doing right now and also on day number 29 so we have we have found the x we are claiming that x is equal to negative 6 now if you like and if you have the time to do the exam, when you're taking the exam, if you feel that you have a little bit time, if you have the luxury of time, you may actually want to verify your answer to make sure that it is correct. Let's do that here. 
because we do have time, we have all the time in the world, nobody's timing us. So let's put it in back in here, x is equal to negative 6 and see if it gives us what we're looking for. It should give us what we're looking for. Okay, so here we go. So 2 times, now we're going to have to use 2 brackets here, because we have one, 1 bracket here and we need 1 to keep negative 6 separate. So 3 times, 3 times negative 6, you see, 3 times negative 6 minus 1, which is why I use different kind of bracket outside. So that's 3x, 3x minus 1. And here we will have 4 times negative 6 minus 14. And eventually these two quantities, these two sides have to equate, they have to be equal to each other. So let's do the inside here. So we have 2 times, 3 times negative 6 is negative 18 and a negative 1. Negative 18 and negative 1 is negative 19. So it's 2 times negative 19 which is negative 30, which is negative 38, negative 38. Now, let's see what happens on this side, shall we? 4 times 6 is 24, and we have a negative there, so it's negative 24 and a negative 14. A negative 24 and negative, four, uh, negative 14, if you add them up, you will find that it, it does indeed equal to negative 38. Voila, they agree, which means our work was correct. Let's do one more. Again the same thing, as soon as I put it on the blackboard, you pause the video and do it yourself. Here we go. It says 3 times 4p minus 1 is equal to 16p plus 5. I'll give you two seconds to be able to pause and unpause the video. Okay, let's do it together. Open the parenthesis. 4 times, uh, 3 times 4p would be 12p. And 3 times negative 1 would be negative 3. And here we have 16p plus 5. This is where the things are going to get tricky. We have two choices. We can either bring the 16p to this side. Okay, listen carefully. If we, the only way we can bring the 16p on this side is by subtracting 16p from both sides. But if you subtract 16p, the negative 16p is going to end up here, and we're going to end up in a negative coefficient for p, which is fine. It's not a big deal. But if you prefer to keep the coefficient of p to be positive, then you can bring 12p to that side. Either way is fine. Let's just stick with what we have been doing. Let's subtract 16p from both sides. And let's add 3 to both sides, so bring the 3 to the other side. Okay, now watch what happens. So we have a, we have a positive, positive 12p and a negative, negative 16p, so that gives us negative 4p, which is what I was talking about. We end up with a negative coefficient for p, but that's okay. Here we have negative 3 and a positive 3, they're going to kill each other. And here we have positive 16 and a negative 16, they're going to kill each other. And we have positive 3 and a positive, positive 3 and a positive 5 which gives us positive 8. We are not interested in knowing we are not interested in knowing how much negative 4 times p is equal to. We want to know what p is equal to. So let's divide both sides of the equation by negative 4. Let's divide this side of the equation by negative 4. Let's divide this side of the equation by negative 4. And this negative 4 will kill this negative 4 and we're left with p here and p is equal to positive 8 divided by negative 4 which is negative 2. Now our job at the end is to make sure that we verify our work, make sure it, the work makes sense. So we're going to do just that. I'm going to give you an unobstructed view for a second. Now we're going to put it back in here and make sure that it, it makes sense. Alright? But keep your work neat and clean. Don't make it messy. Many a times I come across, uh, when I'm teaching my clients, I do online tutoring as you already know, and we are able to see each other. I'm able to see my clients work, my clients are able to see my work on Skype, on the camera. And when I ask them to pick up their notebook and show me their work, sometimes, many a times rather, the work is so messy. It's like a pig's breakfast. Make sure your work is neat and clean. Clean work is a sign of clean thinking. If your work is cluttered, your thinking is cluttered. Keep it neat and clean. It doesn't, it doesn't cost any more money. It doesn't cost any more time. 
As a matter of fact, I would go on to argue that probably it costs less time to keep it clean because if you don't keep it clean and it becomes cluttered, sometimes you have to go back and look for something you made a mistake, it will end up costing you a lot more time. Just keep it clean. This is how it should look like. I say that at the risk of sounding quite immodest. P equals negative 2. Let's put it in here and we don't need those bloody arrows anymore. So, three times, again we're going to need two kind of parentheses because we have 4P. Three times 4 times P, which, is, which we're claiming to be negative 2 and a negative 1. This is one side and the other side we have 16 times P, which we're claiming to be negative 2 plus 5. Let's see what this works out to be. So here we have 3 times 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 and a negative 1 which is 3 times negative 9 which is negative 27. This side is negative 27. Let's see what this side works out to be. Six, 16 times negative 2 is negative 32 and a positive 5. A negative 32 and a positive 5 is indeed negative 27 which is equal to this side right here. They do they do agree. 3 times negative 9 is indeed negative 27, which means that I claim that p is equal to negative 2, which means that I claim that p is equal to negative 2 was indeed valid one. It was indeed a valid claim. It was indeed a valid one. Last one. Let's do one more. Number 3. Enough of the talk. Number 3. Again, you see, things should line up, should, should, should look clean. But you know, it's a habit that the teachers have to instill in a child from the very young age. And unfortunately, many a times I find that teachers, I don't want to pick any particular country, uh, they, don't, they don't instill that kind of discipline in the child. But where I come from, our teachers were very strict and they instill some good values and good habits in the work. There we go. The next one is a over 10 equals 5 over 12. And of course you do not appreciate the value of that obviously as a child at the age of 6. But you reflect upon it at the age of 60 and you say to yourself, by golly that was a good, that was a good move on, on part of my teacher. Let's solve for it, shall we? Enough of the enough of the sermon. Let's solve for it. You want to do it yourself first? You want to give it a shot? Go ahead, be my guest. Pause the video, do it yourself, and then compare your work against the work we'll do together. Okay? I'll give you a couple of seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. That's just my polite way of saying that I want to have a sip of my tea, but my tea is all finished. Okay, let's let's get going, shall we? So we want to get a by itself, we want to get the unknown quantity by itself. Here we have a over 10, we have one tenth of a, we don't want one tenth of a, we want to find out a. How do we get rid of this 10? It's very simple. Multiply both sides by 10. That's all it is, that's all you have to do. Multiply both sides by 10 and 10 is going to disappear magically. And a now equals this quantity right here. Now again, what I'm about to do, if it makes it easier for you to see, you, if you wanted to, this is a baby step, you understand? You don't have to do that. But if you want to do the baby step, there is nothing, there is no shame in it. If you want to put in one underneath it to keep it clean, to keep it separate in your mind, you can see that. You can see that it's a numerator. It's a 10 and that's a 12. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. Shall we? And if you do that, 12 will become 6 and 10 will become 5. So what does A equal to? A would equal to 5 times 5, which is 25, over 6. There you go. Over 6. And let's see, that's the value of A. Let's verify, shall we? If we put this value of A back in here, we should be able to get what's on this side. Let's verify it. Uh, where can we do that? So let's put it here. Make a note that A is equal to 25 over 6. And we're going to continue our work here. So what we were given was, what we were given was, a over 10 equals 5 over 12. That's what we have to show here. 
Now when we say a over 10, okay, listen carefully, this is a over 10. This a over 10 can be written as, can be written as 1 tenth, 1 tenth times a. It is same as a over 10. This quantity, 1 tenth times a, is same as a over 10. I hope you are able to see that. So the reason we separate that is because a in itself is a fraction. So we need to put it in here and show that this side equals that side. A we are claiming is equal to 25 over 6. Let's put it in here. 25 over 6. Shall we? Now we see 10 here, we see 25 here. Let's divide top and bottom by 5, shall we? 10 is a multiple of 5, 25 is a multiple of 5. Let's divide top and bottom by 5, shall we? Let's do that. 10 divided by 5 is 2. And 25 divided by 5 is 5. And what do you know? What do we have on the top? On the top we have 1 times 5. Or well 1 times 5, last time I checked, equals 5. And what do we have on the bottom? We have 2 times 6. And at the same time when I was checking that, I also checked this one last time. And 2 times 6 is 12. By golly, it checks out. This side is 5 over 12 and this side is 1 times 5 over 2 times 6. 2 times 6 is 12, 1 times 5 is, it checks out, it is correct. That was the end of that topic. We are going to move on to chapter number 24 where we will deal with some, as they call it, the real world problem. Well, uh, if you want real world problem you come to me. I will give you some real world problem to deal with. But such is life. We'll just stick with the problems that they give us in the book. You understand? I'll see you tomorrow. If you want to get hold of me, you can send me an email at kashwaniprep at iCloud.com. Alright? Bye now.